Okay. Right. So okay. then okay. let's do um after Megan sings, let's do it two times through. So first and second ending. Okay. Well, and then we'll, we'll go to second yeah. verse. Okay. And then does that and, make sense? And so after the reverse. I called that the Okay. Okay. So Megan sings one time, then we go through it twice. <coughs> yeah. So then by the time I do the second verse, we're on the second ending. Let's start on the second, second verse. verse as though, and so that would be the second time through. That would be the second ending for the. So you're going to come in with the second verse after the second verse. Yes. Yeah. Strong. Good evening. Welcome to St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Parish for our celebration of the eighth Sunday in Ordinary Time. This Mass is offered for the people of the parish. Our opening hymn is number 533 in the Green Hymnal, All Creatures of Our God and, All Creatures of Our God and King, verses 1 and 3. Once again, it's number 533, verses 1 and 3. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Well, good evening, everyone. 
Well, we come to reflect this evening upon sin and how we are so quick to point out the sins of others and oftentimes so hesitant to actually look at our own. And so we recognize that we don't always recognize our own sinfulness. So let's pause for a moment now, call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. O oh Lord, we pray that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. When a sieve is shaken, the husks appear. So do one's faults when one speaks. As the test of what the potter molds is in the furnace, so in tribulation is the test of the just. The fruit of a tree shows the care it has had so too does one's speech disclose the bent of one's mind. Praise no one before he speaks, for it is then that people are tested. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when this, which is corruptible, clothes itself with the incorruptibility, and this, which is mortal, clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, be firm, steadfast, always fully devoted to the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher, but when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove the, that splinter in your eye, when you don't even notice the wooden beam in your own eye? You hypocrite. Remove the wooden beam from your eye first, then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. A good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For people do not pick figs from thorn bushes, nor do they gather grapes from brambles. A good person out of the store of goodness in his heart produces good. But an evil person, out of a store of evil, produces evil. For from the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. The Gospel of the Lord. Yes, I've got a children's homily for you. <laughs> so um, this evening, I'd like to focus just on uh, a very, very narrow focus having to do with the splinter and the board. And, and so let's kind of walk through this um, to uh, apply what Jesus is trying to teach us to our lives. I brought a spotlight. And I, I brought this because it seems to me that this would be a good representation of what it would be for us to be looking at other people and going, I see your sin, Dave, right? I mean, how often do we do that? And, and really reflect upon that in your own life, because I think it's far more often than we're probably willing to realize, right? Right? I mean, how, many, how often is it that we are shining the light on a coworker? And it can be with gossip, it can be passive aggressive behavior, it can be just, just outright trying to undermine somebody. You know, how often can we say that we are just putting the spotlight, by the way, when I'm pointing this somewhere, it's the only person that's a real sinner is Dave. But, but anyway, um, th this is not going anywhere because of what I'm talking about. But how often is it that we can look in our family life, say in, in our marriages, and, and we can say how quick I am to see the faults of my spouse and, oh, yes, name them for them, right? I mean... It's just one of the most common things, I think, that, that is part of married life, is that we just, uh, depending upon where we are in emotionally in our, in our lives, usually it comes out with a lot of pressure that we're experiencing, where we just start picking on one another and picking out the sins that we see, at least that we think we see, that we are convinced that we see in someone else. And for those of you who might be students who are here, you know, how often do you find your classmates, maybe you're one that is picked on in this way where there is this spotlight that somebody's shining on what you're doing wrong. And, and what I think is, um, you know, is so important about this is for us to recognize 
how often we do this. Now, now, there's a caveat here, I think, uh, that's important to share, and that is that, that it is appropriate in our lives as a Christian people to point out behavior that's not right in, a, in appropriate people, right? And that can be a husband and a wife showing uh, inappropriate behavior, something that's just not, not quite right. But it's totally different when it's just like lasering in constantly and, and, and constantly just, just focusing on the sin of the other. So as we began our Lenten journey here on Wednesday, you know, I would encourage you through Lent, and remember, I, you know, I always share this with everybody, we Catholics are a crazy breed. You know, we spend 40 days where we're encouraged to look at our own sinfulness. Now, how many people on earth do that, right? I mean, and yet that's what we're called to do, and to make a faithful Lenten journey, we need to do that. So Jesus makes that point by saying, why are you trying to go point out the splinter in somebody else's eye when you've got a plank in your own. Good point, right? Now, if, if we are truly examining our own sinfulness and we're really doing that, it changes the way that we treat other people when we're identifying things that maybe aren't quite right in their behavior. And, of course, that's what Jesus is saying, is he's saying when you, when you remove the plank from your own eye, you're going to see things differently. And, and you're going to then be identifying splinters in other places in a way that you just don't do otherwise. So during Lent, I'd like to encourage everybody to make a regular examination of conscience. As you, as you take this journey. And maybe consider going to confession once a week or once every two weeks, and not just the once that's prescribed by the church. Because getting rid of the plank in our own lives is job number one, not looking and identifying the sins in other people, right? So how do we do that? And I think that... that I brought this mirror along. And, of course, the way that we do it is by taking the mirror of God's word and turning it on our own lives. You know, one of the great blessings, this is, you may find this odd, but it's really true. One of the great blessings of preparing homilies so often is that it's like, God's word is a constant mirror in my face in, in saying, man, I'm not living that way. You know, the challenge of, of applying it, for me to apply it to you, I've got to start out by applying it to myself. And, and it's like, if you really use God's word, and, and by the way, and you all have, uh, that have been in the parish for a while, you've heard me say this before, I think the best examination of conscience are the sacred scriptures. That that's where we come to see Jesus and God in, in general reflecting back to us what we need to hear and see. And really, scriptures are like a mirror that, that is there. And then the final thing that I think is important and uh, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what those mirrors are that women use in, in, the, the, uh, in the dressing rooms. Anybody want to tell me what they are? Are they cosmetic mirrors or something? No. What, what are they called? Oh, magnifying mirrors. Okay. And, and, you know, these magnifying mirrors, I think, are kind of what we all need. Right? And there are two things that they do. One is they magnify. 
And, and that's what God's word does, is, it, is it's like a magnifier for us to be able to, um, to see what's really going on in our lives. Another way of, of the magnifying happening is by going to confession. When we name things that we think we're doing wrong, then the priest can assist you in having a deeper understanding of how, how you might be approaching what you're looking at. And, and, and it's a way of, of magnification, not in a negative sense, but, a, but in a very positive sense. And then, you know, on these, these uh, magnifying mirrors, they're oftentimes ringed around by light, right? And um, as I've gotten older, I need more light than I used to. And so I brought, you know, bringing this, it's completely different to shine this on somebody else's splitters and then to shine it on our own lives and, and really take the focus and place it on ourselves. And I think, you know, during Lent, that's, that's one of the most important things we're called to do, is to take this time to really look at ourselves, not other people. I, I was laughing um, with a, a priest brother on convocation, and, and he was commenting about um, how he always... He's not always sure exactly what to say, and I, I, I identify completely with what he's saying, is when a spouse comes into confession and, and says, Father, forgive me for I've sinned, I've done this, and it's all because of my husband, right? Or all because of my wife, what my wife is doing. Stop that, right? Look in the mirror, and recognize, I can't see you when I'm looking in the mirror. I can only see myself. And sh let, it, let God's word magnify what we need to see. And let God's light shine on us rather than having our light shine in judgment on other people. So, brothers and sisters, as we come to begin this Lenten season... Let's listen to God's word that he, sh that he has given to us here in our gospel this evening. And as he has said, let us respond to God's word by actually doing what he calls us to do. And let us profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In trusting in God's love and mercy, let us turn to him with our prayers. <clears throat> that the Pope and bishops and all who collaborate with them in ministry may experience the constant guidance of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> that all who hold and seek public office may pursue the common good above any personal gain or advantage we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the pro-life movement may grow in unity and strength, declaring with St. Paul that death has been swallowed up in victory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all <clears throat> God's people may, by their conversations, honor the Lord and help others to draw closer to him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the homeless, the unemployed, the unborn, and those on death row, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick of our parish and others requesting special intentions may be consoled, strengthened, and healed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died, including Martin Bonato and Ray Ackley, may have eternal rest, and that all who mourn them may have the Lord's consolation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers offered in our parish book of intentions and for the prayers we now make in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the uh, conversion of the heart of Vladimir Putin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for protection uh, for the, the people of the Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer and for reconciliation and peace to come to be present in their, uh, in their land. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Good and gracious God, grant these in all of our prayers according to your will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in singing number 733 in the green hymnal. We are many parts. Number 733.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice for your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that you what that what you grant as the source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. 
Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Elizabeth and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Andrew, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's extend to one another the sign of peace. peace. <laughs> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in our communion hymn in the green hymnal number 525, Laudate Dominum, number 525 in the green hymnal. Thank you. 
Let us pray. <clears throat> Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partners of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, please be seated just for a quick moment. <clears throat> So this Sunday, we have faith formation for all students and then for sacramental parents. Um, and then, of course, Ash Wednesday is this Wednesday, and we'll have uh, masses at 7 in the morning and 7 in the evening. And there is the school mass, which is an, an Ash Wednesday mass at 9 a.m., 
Um, if you come to that, it'll just, the kids take up all the pews, so you may have to sit out in the foyer. You're certainly welcome to come then. Um, but uh, we encourage folks to come to the others just because it would uh, be too many people at nine otherwise. Uh, this Lent, we're bringing back our, our soup suppers and stations on Fridays. The soup suppers will begin at 6 p.m., followed by stations at 7 p.m. And all are welcome, of course, to attend. And feel free to bring your favorite meatless soup or bread uh, for the meal. And, of course, that will be in the, uh, the Mickey Gem. Uh, seven, uh, we're, we're going to be offering a course, actually I'll be offering the course, uh, Seven Deadly Sins, six, uh, Seven Lively Virtues. Um, it's a Bishop Barron series that is just outstanding, and it's, uh, just, it's just perfect for Lent. And that will be on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m., and it's, um, it's going to be uh, uh, in person at 7 p.m., and it's about 90-minute sessions uh, uh, that we have. Uh, but uh, if you've never been part of one of his video series, they're just incredibly well done. And uh, we used this one over at St. Pat's many years ago, and I just had rave reviews of people who took that journey uh, in learning about the seven deadly sins and seven lively virtues. Uh, we invite you, if you would, to consider signing up for adoration. Um, the hours most needed are at 11, uh, 11 and 12, uh, it, I guess it would actually be 12 a.m., 11 p.m. and 12 a.m., so at night, on Sunday and Monday. So if any of you would be able to uh, make a commitment to those times, that would be wonderful, as, of course, we try to have... Um, uh, Eucharistic adoration uh, perpetually, and those would be uh, the times uh, to, uh, to keep in mind. And then I wanted uh, to encourage those of you that are home uh, to come back to Mass during Lent. This is a good time for you to take the plunge and get back to Mass here in the church. Um, the, uh, uh, the numbers of COVID have gone down dramatically, and we'll continue to have our section here in the church. If you're at all concerned about, uh, uh, about the virus, if you continue to be, um, we'll continue to have our section here in the church where everyone masks and is socially distanced. But really want to encourage you to, to get back to live mass and and come celebrate the Eucharist here uh, in the church itself. And then finally, I, I just have a bone to pick with you three. Um, I would call you the three angels, but I know Stephanie too well, and that, so I can't say three angels. I can say two angels and Stephanie. If, if y'all don't know, I, I've known Stephanie for years, and we've had a very close relationship. So that's where the joking comes from. Yeah, okay, all right. So, but I wanted to mention that to you through your singing was just absolutely beautiful, and I, yeah, and I was so lifted up by your singing the Kyrie. That's the first time ever that I've forgotten to say the prayer after the Kyrie. Seriously, but I mean, literally, my heart was just lifted up. And then I was ready for the Gloria. So anyway, thank you. Thank you for, uh, uh, for offering your gift of, uh, of praise of God here in our liturgy. Well, uh, please rise and everybody have a wonderful week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Please join in our closing hymn, number 522, Glory and Praise to Our God, number 522 in the green hymnal. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days, the blessings he bears.